I was aware of the heat and humidity, but nothing prepared me for what hit me when I entered those caves. Caves are portals to the past, where time stands still and history is etched into the very rock itself. Beneath the Earth's surface, these mysterious caverns have safeguarded secrets for millennia and have brought us stories from centuries ago that would have otherwise been lost. But sometimes, the discoveries are far darker than you would expect. Now, this is quite a discovery. Fragments of a biblical scroll, along with other relics, have been found in desert caves in Israel. And well, that's exactly what's just happened. Join us as we uncover the secrets of the deepest cave on Earth, which is now fully sealed up, and the discoveries that it's brought that shocked everyone. Hidden deep beneath the Earth's surface, Romania's Movil Cave stands as the one discovery that defies the laws of evolution. For an astonishing 5.5 million years, this subterranean marvel remained cut off from the outside world, sealed by the whims of nature with an impenetrable barrier of limestone. It wasn't until the 21st century that intrepid researchers finally breached its confines, unveiling a world that had evolved all on its own, untouched by the passage of time. While it was discovered in 1986, accessing Movial Cave is still not simple. It takes a descent through a long shaft followed by a labyrinth of limestone tunnels to get to this otherworldly domain. While the temperature inside maintains a relatively pleasant 77 degrees Fahrenheit, the air carries the unmistakable stench of rotten eggs. This is because of a pool of sulfuric water inside the cave's depths, giving off lethal hydrogen sulfide whenever its surface is disturbed. If a human were to spend over a few minutes inside the cave, they'd die from multiple organ failure, starting with the lungs. But what makes Movil Cave truly extraordinary is the life that has adapted to its harsh conditions. At the heart of this unique ecosystem is a special type of bacteria that can survive without oxygen. Unlike the life we are familiar with on the surface, these resilient microorganisms feed on carbon, showing us a world where things work totally differently from how they do everywhere else. Scientists are particularly interested in studying these life forms to gain insights into managing greenhouse gases in our environment. Exploring further reveals a diverse array of more than 50 strange species that call Movil Cave home. Creepy crawly creatures like cave leeches, snails, scorpions, and spiders roam its dark chambers. And reigning over this underground kingdom is the king of the cave a venomous centipede measuring just two inches long. Despite its small size, it is the top predator in the cave, striking fear into other inhabitants with its potent venom. This is the only example on Earth of a place where life thrives even without the number one general requirement, oxygen. It shows us how the world could have been had we been dealt with a little less oxygen and a lot more sulfur. What makes things worse is the fact that because the air is so toxic that exposure to it can be fatal, no one can really venture inside and study the cave in detail, so we're forced to learn about it through machines. But so far, all of the insight that we've gotten has been more and more terrifying, which just leaves room for one question. Can it really get crazier than this? Well, maybe. Back in 1836, there was a group of boys exploring a place called Arthur's Seat in Scotland. One day, while they were out having an adventure, they stumbled upon something really strange. They found a little cave, and when they looked inside, they saw 17 tiny coffins. What made it even weirder was that the coffins had little figures inside, all dressed up in handmade clothes. News about this discovery spread like wildfire, and people started coming up with all sorts of crazy explanations. Some folks thought it had something to do with witchcraft, demons, and black magic. Others had a more sentimental idea. They suggested that the coffins were made as a way to remember friends who had died far away or been lost at sea. It was like a way of giving them a proper goodbye. The thought of that is quite sweet, but the truth behind it is much less heartwarming. Nowadays, experts believe that those 17 coffins were actually made as a tribute to the victims of two men named William Burke and William Hare. They were stealing dead bodies and selling them to medical schools without anyone knowing where the bodies went. So the theory goes that someone made those coffins to honor the poor souls who suffered at the hands of Burke and Hare giving them brand new tiny graves so they can finally rest in peace since the opportunity was taken from them the first time around. 
But you see, caves all around the world have been used as burial sites. There are some that people still know about and others that have been forgotten. While today, the Cabayan Mummy Burial Caves in the Philippines hold a profound cultural significance and have been acknowledged by UNESCO for their historical value. The importance of these caves goes far beyond any recognition an international organization can give them. For the people who chose these sacred grounds to lay their loved ones to rest, it held a profound meaning that transcended time and space. These caves were once used by the Ibaloi tribe, who practiced a unique form of embalming reminiscent of ancient Egyptian techniques. As the end of life approached, those who were aware of their impending demise would initiate the mummification process by consuming a salty solution. Over the course of several weeks following death, the process would be meticulously completed. Once prepared, the preserved bodies were placed inside ornately crafted wooden coffins, which were then laid to rest in the ancient burial caves. This careful preservation of their deceased ancestors honored their memory and ensured their spiritual continuity into the afterlife. Centuries passed, and the ancient burial practices gradually faded away with the arrival of European influences in the 16th century. The caves, housing the remarkable mummified remains, remained undisturbed, safeguarding the memories of generations past. However, the sanctity of the caves was disrupted when loggers stumbled upon their hidden chambers during the 20th century, suddenly opening the caves up to a whole new world of threats. Insects and fungi threatened the delicate state of the mummies, while human interference posed risks of damage and looting. But the Ibaloi people rallied to protect their ancestral resting place. Although the caves are no longer actively used for burials, they continue to be regarded as hallowed grounds. Since the rediscovery of the caves, extensive studies have been conducted on the mummified remains. Notably, the chieftain Apo Anu, among others, was carefully reinterred in the caves to honor his distinguished status. Plus, the examination of the intricately tattooed designs adorning many of the mummies has provided a fascinating connection to the past. Through these ancient tattoos, modern-day descendants have gained insights into the ancestral traditions and with the conservation efforts, they've been able to hold on to their history while also giving the world a look into the hundreds of years of precious history that would otherwise be lost. But not all caves are storing secrets of the dead. Some celebrate life too. In the Yucatan region of Mexico, a remarkable discovery awaited, a hidden cave filled with ancient Maya artifacts, pottery, and bones. But what truly fascinated archeologists were the handprints adorning the cave walls, 137 of them painted in striking black and red colors, nestled beneath the protective branches of a sacred ceiba tree. This cave held immense importance in the coming-of-age rituals of the ancient Maya, who flourished in the area around 1,200 years ago. Archaeologist Sergio Grosjean shared that the cave served as a sacred place where Maya children would go to leave their mark as they reached their teenage years. First, they pressed their hands against the wall, leaving black handprints symbolizing a profound idea of death. It wasn't about literal death, but rather a symbolic representation within their rituals. It signified a transformative journey, a transition from one stage of life to another, where their childhood version dies and the grown version is born. Afterward, they added red handprints representing the intertwined themes of war and life. But you see, this was no ordinary ceremony. The children who grew up during this time faced immense cultural shifts and daunting challenges. They lived through a period of devastating droughts, causing widespread death and the collapse of once thriving cities. These handprints are more than just a visual thing. They provide us with a glimpse into the minds and hearts of the Maya people. They reveal intricate beliefs and a unique worldview. The cave itself held a sacred aura, offering solace and guidance to the young Maya as they navigated through adversity. It connected them to their ancestors, serving as a tangible link to their rich cultural heritage. Today, we have written records of people existing. Back then, these handprints were all they had to hold on to their history. And today, they've given us insight into their lives too. While we're on the topic of caves, life and death, we have to talk about Joseph Lovelace. In the late 1800s, there was a man named Joseph Henry Lovelace, and he didn't really have a good reputation. He got into trouble a lot for bootlegging and counterfeiting, and he was pretty good at escaping from the law. Even his first wife couldn't stand him and divorced him, which was rare back then. 
Then he married another woman named Agnes, and they lived in a tent outside a town called Dubois, Idaho. Happily ever after? Not quite. On May 5, 1916, something terrible happened. Agnes was found dead, and it was a horrifying sight. She had been brutally hacked to pieces with an axe. Loveless was arrested while trying to run away, but considering how lawless the world was back then, he managed to escape again and was never seen or heard from again. For years, this was a big mystery. Everyone was wondering, where did Joseph Loveless go? Then, in 1979, a family exploring a cave outside St. Anthony, Idaho made a shocking discovery. They found a torso wrapped in burlap. No head, no body, just a torso. In 1991, another person found a hand and later, more body parts were found. It turned into a gruesome murder mystery. In 2019, advancements in technology helped solve part of the puzzle. DNA testing revealed that the remains belonged to the grandson of Joseph Henry Loveless, who was 87 years old at the time. This discovery shed some light on the fate of Joseph Loveless, but the murderer was never officially identified. The local sheriff suggested that back in 1916, the locals might have taken matters into their own hands to deal with the problem. Since he killed his wife, it's likely that they found him and got rid of him before he could go on and inflict the same pain on someone else. But the craziest part of the whole thing is that Joseph's head has never been found. You see, caves are very good at keeping secrets, so much so that some mysteries just never get solved. Like how back in the 1990s, archaeologists started exploring Brunecco Cave looking for eretifacts, but it wasn't until 2016 that the findings in one chamber caught the attention of National Geographic. In this chamber, about 1,000 feet from the cave's entrance, something fascinating was discovered. A collection of rings made from around 400 stalagmites. These stalagmites were carefully cut to the same height and arranged in a special way. There was a large circle about 22 feet in diameter, a smaller semicircle, and other stalagmites stacked in meaningful piles at the center. It was an interesting arrangement, and everyone was intrigued by what they were seeing. Initially, a lot of people doubted its significance, suggesting it might be a random occurrence caused by hibernating bears. However, the evidence points to a totally different story. Archaeologists found traces of burned fires within the circle and burnt bones, indicating intentional human activity. But what makes this discovery even more remarkable is its age. The site has been dated back to a staggering 176,000 years ago, long before our species, Homo sapiens, even existed. It was actually Neanderthals who created these meaningful patterns and illuminated the deep cave while doing so. This finding challenges our previous perceptions of Neanderthals. It suggests that they had a structured society and were capable of complex behaviors. It opens up new possibilities for understanding their culture and intelligence. This remarkable discovery could reshape our understanding of our distant human relatives, the Neanderthals, in a light we had never seen them in before. But at the same time, there's also other ways that we've learned about our own history through caves. Deep beneath the bustling streets of Paris lies the Paris Catacombs, an expansive network of tunnels infamous for housing the remains of over 6 million people. The origins of the catacombs can be traced back to the late 18th century, a time when the city faced serious public health issues linked to its overcrowded cemeteries. A decision was made to solve this problem by relocating the remains to an underground location. And so, the transformation began. Paris authorities wisely chose a site that was easily accessible but outside the city limits, the former Tome Issoire quarries beneath the plain of Montrouge. From 1785 to 1787, the first evacuations took place, and the largest cemetery in Paris, the Saints Innocents Cemetery, was emptied. But over the next hundred years, the caves full of bones went from being the most popular thing in town to being forgotten. Until 1809, when the catacombs opened their doors to the public, but only through appointment. A register was thoughtfully placed at the end of the tour, inviting visitors to jot down their thoughts and impressions. The idea quickly took off, becoming a hit with both French and foreign visitors, who marveled at the fascinating underground world beneath the City of Light. Today, the catacombs are a popular tourist destination, welcoming millions of visitors each year. Within its dark passages, Approximately six million human skeletons rest peacefully, each one a silent witness to the history and evolution of this captivating city. You can actually learn a lot from the remains of humans, because as you venture into older and older discoveries, things tend to get more and more interesting. 
Depending on where you find the remains and how old they are, stories tend to change drastically. In 2003, a group of scientists embarked on an archaeological expedition in the Liang Bua Cave, located in Flores, Indonesia. Little did they know that their findings would challenge everything we thought we knew about human evolution. Among the discoveries were sets of ancient human remains that left researchers baffled and amazed. The bones found in the cave belonged to fully grown adults, but their size was strikingly different from our own. Standing at just about three and a half feet tall, these individuals were significantly smaller than any human species known to exist. The scientific community quickly dubbed them hobbits because of their size. This astonishing revelation sent shockwaves through the scientific world. Homo fresiensis and that discovery was so startling and yet so exciting and invigorating. These extinct humans, scientifically classified as Homo floresiensis, were not only smaller than any other known human species, but were even a foot shorter than the smallest African pygmies. Initially, some experts hypothesized that these individuals may have suffered from a medical condition that stunted their growth. However, recent studies have shed light on a different perspective. Surprisingly, extensive research has shown that the hobbits were not afflicted by any diseases that could account for their small size. On the contrary, they were remarkably healthy, upright, and intelligent beings. Despite their hobbit-like stature, they still had the cognitive abilities and physical characteristics expected of a fully functioning human. This groundbreaking discovery has forced scientists to reevaluate their understanding of human evolution. The existence of Homo floresiensis challenges the long-held notion that our own species, Homo sapiens, was the sole surviving human species on Earth. The hobbits of Flores demonstrate that multiple branches of the human family tree coexisted, each with its unique traits and adaptations. The Liangbua Cave and its remarkable inhabitants offer a glimpse into the diverse web that is human history. Uncovering the existence of a previously unknown human species opens doors to countless questions about our shared past and the rich complexity of our evolutionary journey. But there's another finding that's on the total opposite side of the spectrum. In southern China's Pangxian Dadong Cave, a remarkable find captured the attention of archaeologists and scientists alike. As they ventured into the cave, perched 1,600 feet above sea level, they stumbled upon an astonishing collection of enormous bones. Within the caverns of Pangxian Dadong, researchers uncovered bones from over 40 ancient mammal species. Most of these species were massive pack animals and herbivores that roamed the earth long ago. The diverse range of bones included ancient rhinos, elephant-like creatures known as stegodons, and even the intriguing Gigantopithecus, a species reminiscent of the legendary Bigfoot. What fascinated archaeologists the most was the evidence suggesting human involvement in the arrangement and treatment of these ancient bones. Many bones showed signs of human manipulation, such as burning and cutting marks. These findings strongly suggested that our ancient ancestors played a role in accumulating and organizing this impressive stockpile of bones. But this is also where a puzzling question emerged. How did our early human ancestors manage to transport such massive animals to the elevated cave site in the first place? The sheer logistics and challenges of navigating the rugged terrain and overcoming the steep cliffs added an air of mystery to this fascinating discovery. The Pangxian Dadong Cave just offers a glimpse into the interactions between ancient humans and the colossal creatures that once roamed the land. The cave's collection of ancient bones provides valuable insights into the lives and activities of early humans, shedding light on their hunting practices, rituals, and the deep connections they forged with the natural world. As scientists continue to investigate the mysteries of Pangxian Dadong, the cave stands as a testament to the wonders hidden within Earth's ancient landscapes. Each bone tells a story unravels a mystery, and invites us to contemplate the remarkable journey of our species, from the distant past to the present day. Although there are parts of our past we all try to forget about, that might have been why the Actun Tunikil Muknal was forgotten for hundreds of years. This is an important archaeological site located in Belize. The cave has provided valuable insights into the ancient Mayan civilization through the discovery of various artifacts. However, what makes this site truly remarkable, or perhaps infamous, is its translated name, the Cave of the Crystal Sepulchre. The cave holds evidence of ritualistic sacrifices that took place in ancient times. As archaeologists explored its chambers, they found a haunting scene, skeletons scattered amidst ceremonial objects, decorations, and even resting on their own altars. 
these individuals met their demise at the hands of other humans, indicating the significance of human sacrifice in Mayan culture. The range of age among the discovered skeletons varies from infants to approximately 40 years old. Some of these individuals exhibit intentional skull shaping, a practice that was common among the ancient Maya. But among all the findings, one particular discovery stands out, the fully calcified remains of a 17-year-old boy. Interestingly, when the remains were initially found, they were mistakenly thought to belong to a female and were later named the Crystal Maiden. The state of preservation of this adolescent's bones is truly astonishing. Over time, calcium crystals completely covered his skeletal remains. The encased bones give the appearance of an incredibly macabre snow sculpture. However, this remarkable preservation also offers insights into the boy's unfortunate fate. Upon closer examination, experts discovered that the crystal maiden's vertebrae were smashed, indicating a violent and painful end to his life. It is hypothesized that he endured a slow and agonizing death, with his suffering now forever frozen in time through the preservation of his remains. The discovery of the Crystal Maiden in the Cave of the Crystal Sepulcher has provided archaeologists with a unique glimpse into the dark rituals and practices of the ancient Mayan civilization. It serves as a chilling reminder of the profound religious beliefs and the significance of sacrifice in their culture. This remarkable find continues to captivate researchers and visitors alike, shedding light on the complex world of the Maya and how they evolved into the people they are today. But people aren't the only ones on Earth who evolved. Back in 1987, a group of archaeologists had an incredible stroke of luck while excavating a cave in Mount Owen, located in New Zealand. As they dug deeper into the Earth, they stumbled upon a truly remarkable find, a bird claw. What made this discovery even more astonishing was that the claw still had flesh and muscle still attached to it. After careful analysis, experts confirmed that the claw belonged to an extinct bird known as the moa. These magnificent creatures vanished from the face of the earth around 700 to 800 years ago, leaving behind only traces of their existence. The group of fortunate archaeologists who made this incredible discovery was the Speleological Society of New Zealand. In the past, there were eight different species of moa birds, each with its own unique characteristics. Some of these avian giants were about the size of a turkey, while others reached towering heights similar to ostriches. Imagine a bird standing up to 12 feet tall and weighing as much as 500 pounds. That's how massive some of these moa birds were. The moa claw that was found in New Zealand's Mount Owen Cave was estimated to be around 3,300 years old. This remarkable piece of evidence served as a testament to the bird's native origins in New Zealand, where they had thrived in the ancient past. When news of the flesh-covered moa claw reached the online world, it caused quite a sensation. Social media platforms buzzed with excitement as people marveled at this incredible relic from the past. How could they not? It's one of the craziest finds in recent history. But in 1903, a fascinating discovery took place in Cheddar, England. Deep within a cave, archaeologists stumbled upon the remains of a skeleton dating back a staggering 9,000 years. This ancient find, known as the Cheddar Man, held many secrets waiting to be unraveled. Little did anyone know that years later, an astonishing connection would be made, linking the Cheddar Man to a history teacher living just half a mile away. Adrian Target, a 42-year-old history teacher, made headlines when it was revealed that he was a direct relative of the Cheddar Man. The surprising connection was discovered through DNA analysis, specifically tracing back through his mother's lineage. This meant that Adrian Target shared an ancestral bond with the ancient skeleton, spanning an astonishing 300 generations. This extraordinary connection made the Cheddar Man the most distant confirmed relative in the world. The Cheddar Man's remains provided a remarkable glimpse into the past. As a hunter-gatherer, he lived around 7000 BCE, a time long before the introduction of agriculture. His discovery shed light on the lives of early humans, revealing insights into their way of life and the environment they lived in. The revelation of Adrian Target's connection to the Cheddar Man came about through a television series called Once Upon a Time in West that focused on archaeology in Somerset. As part of the show, DNA testing was conducted on 20 local individuals whose ancestors were known to have lived in the area for generations. The prestigious Oxford University's Institute of Molecular Medicine carried out the intricate DNA analysis, 
which brought forth the astonishing familial link. The Cheddar Man's remains were initially found deep within Galf's cave, located in the picturesque Cheddar Gorge. This cave has become a significant site for Paleolithic human discoveries in England. The careful excavation of the skeleton provided valuable data about the early human history and offered insights into the transition from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to an agricultural one. Interestingly, the remains of the Cheddar Man offered a clue about the spread of farming practices among ancient populations. Contrary to the prevailing belief that farmers migrated from Eastern Europe into Western Europe, the Cheddar Man's remains indicated that farming actually spread within the population itself. This discovery challenged existing theories and contributed to a better understanding of the agricultural revolution in early human societies. But with that though, the story of the Cheddar Man and Adrian Target's connection highlighted the remarkable way in which science and DNA analysis can bridge the gap between the past and the present, connecting us to our ancestors in profound and unexpected ways. This extraordinary discovery serves as a reminder of our shared human history and the fascinating stories waiting to be uncovered within our very own DNA. Speaking of which, deep within the Lama Lunga Caves in Altamura, Italy, an extraordinary discovery took place. In 1993, the skeletal remains of a Neanderthal, estimated to be around 170,000 years old, were found in a sinkhole. This particular find, known as Altamura Man, proved to be a treasure trove of valuable information about our early human ancestors. Altamura Man held a special distinction as the oldest Neanderthal skeleton from which DNA was successfully extracted. However, the process of extracting this genetic material was no easy task. The skeleton was embedded in cave rock and covered with a thick layer of calcite, making it an incredibly challenging endeavor. Not just that, but the skull of Altamura Man had been shattered into pieces, adding another layer of complexity to the analysis. To preserve the integrity of the skeleton and avoid any potential damage, it was decided to leave Altamura Man in its original resting place within the cave. This decision ensured that future technological advancements could potentially unlock even more insights into this ancient Neanderthal's life. Despite the difficulties posed by the condition of the skull, researchers remained determined to uncover the secrets it held. The stalactites and stalagmites that surrounded the skull made it incredibly hard to study. But you see, their perseverance paid off when they were able to extract DNA from Altamura Man's right shoulder blade. This breakthrough marked a significant milestone in our understanding of Neanderthal genetics. The implications of this discovery are profound. Not only does Altamura Man possess the oldest DNA ever obtained from early humans, but it also has the potential to provide us with a comprehensive understanding of Neanderthal life. Through the examination of the genetic material, scientists can gain insights into the physical attributes, behaviors, and evolutionary history of our distant Neanderthal relatives. One paleontologist involved in the research even called the Altamura Man as the most complete non-human skeleton ever found. The level of preservation and the age of the specimen makes it an invaluable resource for unraveling the mysteries of our ancient past. All of these discoveries just show us how much is still hiding in the shadows of the caves all around the world, just waiting for us to discover them, bringing us stories that we would never even be able to fathom otherwise. Out of all of these discoveries, which one would you want to see in person? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and like always, we'll see you in the next one.